Good evening, welcome to Interesting Talks with Footprints Counseling Service. Welcome to a new year, 2023. This is our very first video for this year. Today's the 3rd of January. I hope that your glass is half full rather than half empty and that the Christmas and New Year celebrations, however you see it in, that you enjoyed it. Today's talk is about four things that you shouldn't say to your counsellor. Four things you shouldn't say to your counsellor. And the first of those things is lying. Because if you're going to be lying to your counsellor, they're not going to know where you're at. They're not going to be able to help you to solve the problems or come up with solutions for what you're looking to achieve in your sessions. And it's just going to be a complete mismatch between you and your counsellor. We're here to help you to help yourself to get better. We'll make suggestions, run ideas by you, do some delving into maybe into your past experiences. But the key thing is you need to be able to tell us the truth, be honest with us, be congruent with us, so that we can help you to help yourself to get better. People might be scared to say the things that have happened to them or have been happening to them. I can understand the nervousness of that and being feel that you're going to be judged because you're going to, after all, you're going to be talking to most likely, not most likely, definitely, to somebody who you don't know. So you don't know that person. But as counsellors, we are non-judgmental. We're not here to judge people. We realise that everybody's got challenges in life and that you'll come to see us to receive help in whatever dilemma that you're going through at that particular juncture of your life. So do your very best to be honest with us and then we can work together to produce the outcomes that you'll be looking for. Second thing is pretending you're doing better. Pretending you're doing better when you're not doing better. Again, this is a form of deception on your behalf because you're not letting us know what's going on. Pretending that things are going better, things that, you know, I'm okay and I'm really better. You know, what we, the session we had last week, it went really, really well. I've been able to implement the stuff that we talked about. I'm, I'm just feeling so good, you know, things are going well for me. Well, that's brilliant. I'd like, I do like hearing that feedback, but only if it's genuine. I don't want to hear that things are going well or no counsellor wants to hear when things are going well and they're not. Because we're here to, again, to help you. We're not going to judge you. We know that if somebody's trying to lose weight, they might go to the gym two or three times and then they can't be bothered to go back again. And if that's the case, then that's the case. I'm not going to judge you. I'll just say to you, well, what ways, what could make it easier for you to go to the gym to lose said weight or whatever objective you're trying to achieve by coming to see me? Um, for example, um, people that are addicted to addictions, i.e. Uh, chemicals, i.e. weed, cocaine, heroin, alcohol. When I was training, it was said that it takes 31 times 31 times for a person to go on a cycle to stop these addictive drugs or behave some behaviors as well you could say before they actually achieve it so i'm quite prepared and understanding and most counselors would be that any changes that somebody wants to go through it might take a long time it might take once but overall we're quite prepared and willing to be patient and wait for clients to make the necessary changes that they want to do for them to get into that better space that they're looking to achieve. Third, pretending that things are going worse than what they are. And some clients might do this, you think, well, why would somebody want to do that? Because they want to continue seeing their um, counsellor. They'll exaggerate how they feel and the counsellor's going to think, well, one, I'm not able to help this person, I'm not doing a very good job. So they might end up referring you to um, another counsellor, a different form of therapy, or maybe some, if in certain cases, hospitalisation. They might want you to go to a hospital, for example, which nobody wants to go there. But saying that, if you're overstating the, the difficulties that you're facing, when well, you're not seeing your counsellor, and that things are getting much, much worse, and it's not the case, you're misleading your counsellor and your counsellor is going to be looking for ways to solve the issues that you've come there for in a different way. And at the end of the day, they're going to be they're going to be barking up the wrong tree, which is not what you've come to therapy for. And it has to be a cut-off point. You don't want to be seeing a therapist, the same therapist for the rest of your life. So be honest, again, if things are worse, 
say they are. But if they're not, don't pretend they're worse, just so that you can continue to see your counsellor. First thing is working. Working through ideas. Now, some people will be given homework and they'll get on with it and they'll do it. Other people will not do it. Now, if you find that some of the ideas that a counsellor or I come up with for you, you will never do them, then say that you'll never do them. You're never going to try to do these sort of things. It's not for you. It's just not your style. And if that's the case, then that's fair enough. Then we will look for other avenues to help you, to help yourself to become the person that you want to be, because this is what you're here for, to change certain behaviours, feelings, thoughts or actions to be acceptable in, your, in a way of, that you want to live your life which you're not doing presently. So when we come up with ideas, which we do, we brainstorm, we, we give you ideas, we give you homework to do, and you're not going to do that homework, just say you're not going to do the homework. And then we'll find, think of something else to do. Adding to that, if you don't want to do any form of homework at all, then you have to look at, uh, is therapy really for you? Is this something that is going to help you to, to move on from where you're at? Because if you refuse everything, then that's very, it's going to be very difficult for me or anybody else to help you to move forward from the place that you're stuck at. Now, these are so a lot of things that you really should tell your therapist or your counsellor. And that's if you've got any feelings of suicide, any suicidal feelings, any dark, dark thoughts. And then I will talk with you through these feelings that you may have and basically do a risk assessment and find out if there's a way that we can work with you and somebody outside of the counselling setting that we have. So if you are actually feeling suicidal, I, I could reach out to that person, maybe your doctor, maybe somebody that you that you trust that you could let them know that you know they need to contact me or you need to contact them if you're feeling very, very low and suicidal. That's a very, very serious issue. So please, when you're talking to your therapist, if you're feeling that way, do tell them. Hopefully you found this talk useful and beneficial. Um, I do one every two weeks on a Tuesday. Um, I thank you for listening to me. Uh, hopefully that when you do see a therapist, if you do see a therapist, that you take this on board and find yourself explaining to them what you feel, how you feel and being honest from the top. Don't lie. Um, don't pretend that things are going better when they're not. Don't pretend that things are going worse when, if, if they're not getting worse. And of course, if you're not prepared to do the homework or you don't want to do that particular homework that was set by you and your therapist, then just say to them, you know, like, that's not going to work for me. And they will um, find other methods to help you, to help yourself. We don't have, we don't bring our egos into the therapy room. We certainly leave those outside of the door because we're here to help you. We're not... We don't feel bad if you say we're not in, you're not interested in doing this. No, we don't, we don't care. We just want to find a way for you to be better. So in two, two weeks' time, do take care of yourself. Enjoy the new year. Bye for now.